Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, The Bee Whisperer. I just want to uh, talk to you a little bit about um, problems that people have, um, especially relatively inexperienced beekeepers who uh, get in touch with me or post on beekeeping chat rooms, or my bees absconded, or my uh, bees, bees have left the hive. And uh, they think for some reason this, this word absconded is used way too frequently in beekeeping. It's a specific thing where bees abscond or leave a hive for a specific reason. Uh, much, much more common. Bees not in a hive in, in the fall are because the colony has died. And they've died almost always because of mites. This is, we're talking about 90% of the time. There are a lot of reasons why, why bees die. One is they can starve, of course, so you have a hive, there's no food in it, the bees have starved to death. This can happen any time of year in between honey flows, um, particularly in the winter, but starvation is a, a reason that bees die, but it's not all that common. Uh, but it's very obvious when it has. Queen loss, of course, uh, you can see conditions where queen cells are being built and that sort of thing. Queen loss is a condition which will result in a hive dying, particularly if they lose the queen over the winter, uh, when there's no way of replacing the queen, or more likely is a virgin queen failed to come back after mating or during her mating flight and never uh, succeeds in taking over the colony. Usually under those circumstances, you end up with a condition called laying workers, which we'll talk about at some other, con some other time. Of course, there are diseases out there which cause bees to die, um, but they're uh, relatively less common. Uh, and I'm not gonna concentrate on those right now. Cold, of course, I've lost a lot of hives to cold, um, um, and dampness can be a problem as well. Uh, so bees can die in the winter time from cold. But if we take the, the, all the bees that die in, in North America, the chances are that 90% of the colonies that died are because of mites. Now those hives that have died may look very different one from another, but it's all for the same thing. It can present in four very different ways. First of all, you have a hive in the late summer. It's mite level built up and the hive starts dying from mites in late summer. What happens then is that the population starts to crash if the, uh, because the mite levels are built, brought in viruses and the viruses start making the bees sick. When the bees feel sick, they leave the hive to die. So the population starts going down very rapidly. During warm weather, during the summertime, during the fall, remember bees are very prone to robbing. They're desperate. Other healthy colonies are desperate to find food. So they start stealing the honey from this collapsing hive. It's basically it's a mite bomb because as that hive dies from mites, the population dwindles down, but those robber bees start picking up all those mites that the dying bees in the hive have built up. And now the hive that's doing the robbing uh, starts getting higher mite loads. So you end up in this particular hive with a hive with absolutely no bees and no honey because all the bees have left the hive to die and the whole load of other bees have come in and stolen all the honey. And this could happen in a matter of two weeks. It can go from a strong hive to a non-existent hive in that short space of time. And during the meantime, it looks like, oh, to the untrained eye, it looks like, wow, that hive is really busy, but it's actually just getting robbed out. Then you have the condition later on in the season. It's getting a bit colder now. And you have the hive is now, you open up the hive and it was full of bees last month, but this month there is no bees, they've gone. But it's still full of honey. And this is, this is so common, it breaks my heart every time I hear it, because people think that the bees have left the hive. And no, yeah, okay, they've left the hive, but they've left the hive to die. They haven't absconded or done something like that. What's happened is, again, as the bees become sick, they leave the hive to die, but it's warm enough for them to fly away but it's not warm enough for robber bees to come in, find that food and take it away. So you end up with a hive that's empty of bees, but full of honey. Exactly the same problem. 
If it's happened later in the season, now it's too cold for the bees in the hive that are dying to leave the hive to die. Some of them might, but the vast majority just drop down to the bottom of the hive. In this case, you end up with a hive full of dead bees at the bottom, an inch or two inches deep of dead bees at the bottom, and the hive is full of honey. Exactly the same thing happened. The virus level just built up a bit later. And finally, if it builds up more slowly or builds up later still, you have a hive which is lots of dead bees at the bottom, but only a little bit of honey left. And this just means that the colony kept going long enough to eat up more of the food resources, but still died from the gradual buildup of viruses in the hive. These are the mite treatments I prefer to use. They're all considered organic mite treatments. First of all, in the summer, I might use hop guard, which is a cardboard strip like this. I would suspend that in the brood chamber amongst the, in the brood area of the hive. It uses hops extract and the beta acids that are taken out as the bees tear this apart and try and remove it from the hive. It's covering the, the um, brood area, hence the biggest density of bees with the miticide. It's very effective in the, in the summer, uh, but it's most effective when there is no brood. So it's a good treatment to use when there's no brood in the hive. You can use it, but it does not penetrate. If there's brood in the hive, it doesn't penetrate the brood, so it's not going to get the bees under the cappings there. So it's recommended for use when there's no brood in the hive. But I use this as a fallback if I cannot use Formic Pro. If my bees need to be treated, I will use Formic Pro, formerly called Mite Away Quick Strips. There's two pads in here. You open them up and lay them on top of the brood frames. This will pen even penetrate the capped brood, so it will kill mites even in the capped brood. Um, so this is my go-to treatment in the summer if I need to treat for mites. The problem is you mustn't use this treatment if the temperature in the hive, particularly for the next three to four days, is going to be above 85 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's going to be too hot, I will check the forecast to see if I can use it later in the month or a week or two later, or if not, I'll have to use the hop guard. So my hop guard is my goat will knock down the mites. The Formic Pro will typically knock out the mites. Later in the season, when the uh, uh, hive is... Uh, preparing for winter and we're getting down to the stage of there being little or no brood in the hive, then I'll go for oxalic acid and I'll put two grams of oxalic acid, sorry, one gram of oxalic acid per brood chamber in the hive. So a double brood chamber hive would take two grams, which is roughly half a teaspoon of oxalic acid crystals in there. That goes in there. You attach this end to a car battery put that in the entrance, it boils off, it heats this up and boils off the, the uh, oxalic acid forming fumes in the hive which then crystallize and it's those crystals forming on the bees and the mites um, which kills off the mites. This works very well when there's no brood in the hive. If there is brood in the hive when you're using this, you'll have to apply three or four times over a 12 day period uh, so that it keeps on getting the bees as they emerge from the capped brood. But we'll deal with more of that in the summer. It is certainly a good idea to invest in a small gas mask, um, a filter to keep, do not breathe in those fumes. This is a relatively inexpensive, costs about 30 bucks, and it will uh, uh, avoid, it will prevent you having uh, breathing the oxalic acid vapors. Having so many colonies, I've invested in a much bigger sublimator, which will uh, treat hives in 30 seconds because the oxalic acid um, vaporizer one there will take two to three minutes to get up to temperature. This will do in 30 seconds what that will take three minutes to do. In these, you'd put the oxalic acid in the little cup, same dosage. You put the sublimator over the cap, and then turn it over and immediately it falls into this hot chamber which shoots the gas into the hive. So you can either apply that by having a hole drilled in at the bottom board of the hive to blow it in through the back of the hive, or you can put it in the entrance of the hive and blow it in the entrance, which is what I do.